I caught up with Marco Pezzana, a divisional CEO at Vitec Imaging Solutions, for a comprehensive talk about the challenges his company is currently facing. The Cinema 5D Virtual Show is brought to you by B&H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Atomos, better monitoring, better recording. Nanlight, professional lighting solution. And Magic Design, creating amazing solutions for film, post-production and television. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from Cinema 5D and welcome to our virtual show. Today I'm here with Marco Pezzana, CEO at Vitec Imaging Solutions. Marco, how are you? I'm great, under the circumstances. Good to see you again. And usually we make uh, interview, uh, interviews with camera manufacturers, CEOs, or people that are actually leading optical divisions and so on. Uh, and this is a good opportunity to talk to you as a person who is leading a whole division of accessories uh, department, different accessories, uh, bag, um, uh, sliders, and so on. So just for people that don't know or might not know, uh, the, your imaging uh, division. Can you please just tell us a little bit about what you do and um, what what are you um, what are you leading? Yes, uh, thank you, Johnny. Uh, my name is Marco. I'm leading uh, uh, Vitec Imaging Solution, the largest division of the Vitec Group. Uh, my division focuses on photographers and independent content creators, and we provide brands like Manfrotto, Gizzo, Serp, Joby, Lopro. Colorama, Lastolate, so everything that you need uh, if you are a passionate photographer or a content creator, except uh, camera and lenses. So this is uh, very impressive. And of course, it brings a lot of uh, responsibility on your shoulders. But uh, in the current situation that we are in, all of us, creators and manufacturers, things are actually changing day by day. Do you think this is a temporary situation in the sense of from the business perspective, or this is something that you can see recovering uh, very fast right after the whole coronavirus is behind us? Well, hopefully the uh, most challenging part uh, of uh, uh, the economic situation will be temporary, uh, and temporary will depend on how long the pandemic will last and how it will be controlled. Uh, but I believe that the challenging time that we are all seeing in terms of uh, uh, lack of consumption and the drop in demand is clearly associated to the lockdown measures, not to less and user appetite uh, for uh, uh, creating and developing content. Uh, so I would expect, uh, uh, starting from the second half of this year, to see a progressive recovery of the industry. Equally, I don't think we will go back to what it used to be fully, uh, partly because uh, that recovery will be progressive, but also because uh, uh, end user behaviors and creators behaviors will be impacted by the learnings of this period. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, will change uh, some of the ways in which they produce, in which they share uh, and where they buy. I do believe that this uh, situation also brings a lot of opportunities, not only uh, negativity. Uh, but I also believe that the ones that will not innovate might disappear. So under your leadership, what are you doing in order to keep this kind of innovation and spirit of the company? Because obviously, as you told me before, everybody's working from home. Yes, uh, actually, before we comment on innovation, uh, as you correctly mentioned, it is a very challenging time from uh, a, a, an health and safety perspective, from a business perspective, from a social perspective. But there are positive elements that are emerging and that will also positive impact our industry. I just want to, uh, to share what are the positive drivers that we see at the moment. Uh, on the one hand, I think due to, uh, you know, the lockdown measures and extensive smart working, we are all seeing an increase in demand for, let's call it, corporate content, which is not necessarily just limited to the large corporations, but anybody who is running any form of business, be it a, a, a small local veggie shop uh, to a restaurant that is now serving, uh, you know, takeaways, have discovered how important it is to have some form of content to produce, to promote their business. And I think that will continue. 
The same applies to individuals because, uh, uh, you know, even private individuals who used the social networks previously to just post a picture uh, or a little video, they are now entertaining themselves by creating better content and seeing amazing things, you know, from people who pretend to be scuba divers in their bedroom or climbing mountains, you know, in their sofa. And they have come up with an amount of creativity that they don't think themselves expected. And in doing that, they have learned to use equipment differently, also benefiting from the gigantic amount of uh, tutorials uh, uh, and educational pro programs that are being made available for free at the moment uh, to the great benefit uh, of this population. So I think that will create uh, uh, more consumption and more content creation of a better quality going forward. Uh, needless to say, e-commerce uh, uh, you know, is increasing dramatically and therefore there will be even greater need uh, for uh, high quality content production uh, for further e-commerce development. But there are also aspects like educational. I mean, all of our children uh, studying from home uh, have actually opened uh, uh, you know, the educational segment uh, to uh, a deeper penetration of content creation. Uh, and likewise, for example, when I think about medical and remote consultation, that's another great area for development in our industry. So there are, I think, uh, uh, some very positive uh, uh, developments. Uh, and I think they are positive not only because they represent a future opportunity for the industry, but they also bring social benefit uh, as they get uh, deployed uh, and implemented. Now, in that context, uh, we have decided, uh, uh, despite the challenging business times, to sustain our R&D investments. Uh, and we are doing it uh, by working on three different levels short term, mid term and longer term. So in the immediate, uh, we are actually investing to repurpose uh, some of our existing products uh, to the specific needs uh, that uh, uh, the pandemic have triggered. Uh, so, for example, there are uh, some lighting products that are proving to be very helpful uh, in uh, temporary hospital and medical applications. And that's what we are doing. There are some supports that are phenomenal to support, uh, uh, you know, thermal detectors for measuring temperature. Uh, and that's another application. So there is a lot that we are doing to simply adapt what we've got uh, to the current needs. So, sorry, just to say to the audience that you're actually in Italy. And that's, that's why it's a very much tight connection, uh, connection between uh, the situation of the country and, and the information you're, you're giving us right now. Yeah, yes, we, we, we've seen it happening probably a little ahead uh, and to a deeper extent uh, than other geographies. Secondly, we are accelerating our uh, planned roadmaps in specific segments that uh, we see to be more in demand uh, going forward. And I'm referring specifically uh, to motion control, lightweight video supports, uh, audio application, and smartphoneography. Uh, so uh, we had the roadmaps established there. We are accelerating them to that purpose. Uh, and uh, uh, thinking more long term and coming back uh, uh, to more traditional photography, uh, we are actually looking back at our core, which will probably evolve into more of a niche. And what we want to do is to repurpose that core. And I'm talking photo supports, I'm talking bags with one primary driver, which will be sustainability. So we are probably envisaging less of a volume driven and more qualitative industry and certainly very attentive to the environment and to circular economy. So these are the three areas where we are investing passionately uh, to reinvent the future as uh, the situation unfolds. Very interesting. I mean, this type of shift, which uh, we will enhance in talking in a second, because some, some points are very interesting for me personally. Uh, but when talking about the challenges, what, what, what are the greatest challenges that you are facing right now? The biggest challenges uh, that we have to face uh, have been two. Uh, clearly, the, the most important uh, actions that we have to take uh, and the first challenge was to make sure that we uh, maintained a level of business continuity whilst securing safety for our employees, which was uh, the, the primary requisite. Uh, so uh, a lot of the energy in the last four weeks uh, went into uh, deploying the necessary protocols to enable smart working and to enable sanitization and to enable uh, the acquisition and implementation 
of all the DPIs and procedures that will make our factories, our hubs and our offices a safe place to work in the circumstances. Uh, so that was incredibly intensive uh, uh, because we also had to break new ground in terms of uh, acquiring knowledge uh, uh, and new competencies. Uh, the second uh, uh, priority was actually to uh, share those learnings uh, and uh, uh, stay connected with all of our employees. Uh, we employ more than 1,000 people in 12 different countries. So as much as uh, we have always put communication internal and external as a priority to the company, we really had to escalate the effort uh, in that sense uh, and, and make sure that management could be uh, extremely effective even uh, in a situation where we all work remotely. Uh, so we all had to step up uh, our competencies uh, in sharing digitally, in managing uh, you know, uh, all sorts of digital calls with multiple participants across different time zones. We know each other for many, many, many years. And in your nature, you are a very optimistic person, meaning if, if anybody will catch a talk with you, you will, and even in, during difficult times, you will always see the, uh, the positive uh, side of, or light of whatever situation there is. This is, I know, firsthand. Um, but in a situation like this, even if you are able to manufacture to a certain level and uh, the distribution, uh, the, the, the distribution uh, chain is a bit broken, people maybe don't feel like really buying stuff. So uh, uh, how, how can you combat this? That's the thing, your optimism and, and plans from one hand, and then let's call it the reality of the market right now. How, how do you balance between the two? Uh, don't, don't, don't take me wrong. I'm actually greatly concerned about uh, uh, the industry in the short term, uh, because clearly, uh, particularly uh, for the smallest businesses uh, and some distribution channels, uh, uh, the current lockdown situation uh, is uh, incredibly demanding. Uh, so that, that's a concern. Uh, and I'm also very sensitive to, uh, you know, people emotions in general, uh, because unfortunately, uh, a lot of families around the world have been uh, very impacted uh, by the events uh, that the pandemic has caused. Um, said that uh, when we think about what we are doing to sustain the business at the moment uh, we are doing a very few basic things number one we did put a lot of effort in making sure that despite the smart working and despite temporary factory closures that have been demanded by government legislation and are appropriate to make sure that we protect uh, uh, employees safety uh, we have managed to secure that all of our logistic hubs, uh, our customer service and our customer care are open so that we can maintain the dialogue with both our business partner and our end users. Of course, demand is much lower, but at least we've not gone silent, uh, which is very, very important. Uh, secondly, as I mentioned earlier, we are trying to rescope uh, part of our product offer so that it is relevant. And by rescoping, it's not necessarily just changing the product, but maybe is to make the product visible to people who may not expect that product to either exist or be useful to their needs uh, if they are not uh, imaging enthusiasts. And I can give you a very basic example right now. Uh, for it, we, so Some of our products are very, very helpful to support smartphones or tablets uh, and be able to share or capture better images if you are on an hospital bed mm. or if you are a teacher and you are recording, uh, you know, classes uh, uh, through uh, distant learning. Uh, so simply by rescoping some of our marketing contents and making them available through different social channels uh, or commercial channels, we are attempting to provide solutions to people who can really benefit from what we do just now. And going forward uh, and thinking more positively, I actually think we will see a strong resurrection of uh, uh, demand for content creation, particularly in cine broadcasting, uh, which has been altered brutally now, uh, but, but clearly I, I cannot imagine people wanting less content in the future. And as soon as those studios will be able to reopen, as soon as people will be able to be out there again, uh, demand would just be phenomenal. 
is your managing style changed? Because obviously you are managing those 1,000 people from home. I'm very, very fortunate in that uh, uh, I've been leading a company that uh, uh, had uh, uh, some very strong core values uh, holding us together. Mm. Uh, so uh, the, the passion uh, of our employees for what we do, uh, the very uh, notion that as a company we have always been uh, 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 transparent, uh, collaborative, participative, informal, uh, global, uh, clearly helped me immensely in keeping connected uh, to our employees uh, despite the disruption. Uh, it also helped us that we were technologically advanced, uh, so within 48 hours we were able to put uh, all of our employees in smart working with efficient technology to communicate. And that obviously was a gigantic facilitation. But when I think about uh, uh, what uh, uh, has changed, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we had to make an even greater effort to communicate at all level. And we are doing it through uh, you know, the widest possible range uh, of uh, uh, communication tools. Uh, we uh, also had uh, to operate uh, uh, very effectively to minimize the economic impact uh, of the pandemic on our people. Uh, our core priority right now is to secure our employees' jobs so that the company can return to move fast uh, as soon as the pandemic is over. And in that sense, as a company, uh, as much as we uh, had to close uh, some manufacturing plants temporarily uh, and implement social securities, uh, we have also activated a program uh, to top up uh, uh, the uh, contribution of social securities to the employees that have been affected, particularly those who are uh, on, uh, uh, let's say, uh, lower income, uh, so that they, 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 they can hopefully withstand the situation harder. Just as an example, uh, the board of directors of Vitek, our group CEO, myself, uh, and all the senior managers have voluntarily cut their salaries so that we can actually fund the initiative of social security top-ups uh, despite the economic challenges that uh, we are facing like any other company. Uh, and also we have uh, uh, maintained an effort in corporate social responsibility initiatives, tailoring, tailor, tailoring them to the specific moment. Uh, uh, so, uh, just to mention a few, uh, we have activities that are totally dedicated to our uh, industry, uh, like uh, free seminars supported by our ambassadors. Uh, we've just launched uh, a film festival for people who want to create, uh, uh, you know, short movies from home. Uh, we have a similar contest uh, on photography. But more importantly, we are making our products and our management competencies available uh, to institution in needs. So we are working, for example, with local schools and local hospitals uh, to provide those solutions that we discussed earlier on. Uh, also, I'm really proud to share that a lot of our employees uh, who are on a short working time right now are actually devoting that time uh, to volunteering uh, in multiple applications. Uh, and all of that, I think, is helping us to be one and feel strong and good under what are unquestionably incredibly tough circumstances. One of the companies that you are leading is Joby, and I'm sure many in our industry know Joby because of the gorilla pod. But under your supervision, you actually navigated the Joby ship into a completely uh, uh, different direction, and you started a kind of a revolution. You, Joby was supposed to become a leading smart phonography company. Uh, and not only the, the, the mini tripods, but also have uh, audio accessories and also light accessories, everything around uh, uh, smart phonography. So obviously, the whole, the whole situation caught you in the middle of transition. If you can share a little bit what was the original plan and where you are right now. Yes, just to set the context, I think in the industry, uh, prior to the pandemic, but this is still relevant, we have seen a number of years where uh, interchangeable lens camera declined because uh, entry level DSLRs uh, had progressively been, let's say, cannibalized by smartphone, uh, which I actually see as an opportunity to serve two different types of demand better. So as a company, what we see right now is that uh, 
passionate professional photographers and advanced hobbyists will continue to be invested in better reflex technology and will continue to buy uh, the top-end interchangeable lens cameras. And we will devote to those users our most professional brands like Manfrotto, Gizzo and Locro. On the contrary, uh, the public that was previously served by entry-level accessories for entry-level cameras has now clearly migrated to smartphones uh, and smartphones that offer uh, better uh, imaging uh, capabilities than ever before. And this is why we have decided to devote Joby uh, to uh, that specific application with uh, uh, a specific focus on Generation Z because we are seeing Generation Z not only as the aspiring influencer and bloggers today, but as most likely, uh, you know, the population from where future content creation and professionals will come from. Uh, and this is why uh, back in January, end of January, uh, we started uh, a major campaign to present uh, an extensive range of new Joby product dedicated to smart photography uh, and smartphoneography. And uh, uh, we uh, also changed uh, uh, or upgraded the brand proposition so that it could relate to Generation Z. Uh, that culminated in a large event that took place in Orlando uh, at the end of February uh, with uh, a, a, an important social media campaign that was run primarily on TikTok. Uh, I'm really pleased to say that despite the disruption, uh, the launch was incredibly successful. Uh, we have achieved, uh, as of yesterday, more than 6.5 billion views on TikTok. We have more than 16 million uh, views on Instagram. Uh, so uh, that, that uh, may sound, uh, uh, if you like, a disconnect uh, versus what the industry is experiencing as a whole. But actually, uh, and again, thinking positive, it proves uh, that the need for content creation and sharing exists. And probably today, Joby really serves the purpose not only with Generation Z, but with a million of other applications uh, because we are all locked in. Uh, and clearly, uh, you know, we are recording this very interview with a smartphone. Uh, uh, you know, the, very much the same is happening across a multitude of businesses uh, and social applications. So this leads me to the next question, which is about professional trade shows. NAB and other shows simply cancelled. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, you are supposed to not participate uh, in this year's uh, NAB. What is your view about uh, um, industry exhibitions in a whole and how, uh, what is your future? What is the future? Because you're not talking about the marketing campaign that you made, which, which you say is very, is very successful. So obviously, maybe, maybe those big shows are complete obsolete for you. No, uh, I think we need to put in the context uh, our decision not to participate at NAB as Vitec Imaging Solution needs to be interpreted in the context of Vitec Group as a whole. Uh, as you know, we are made of multiple divisions. Uh, so our original plan prior to the pandemic was for Vitec Imaging Solution to participate to CP Plus in Japan, whilst the other Vitec divisions that are more focused on filmmaking uh, professional cinematography and high-level broadcasting, uh, we are actually going to attend uh, NAB. Uh, so uh, that, that is fundamentally the group strategy where each of the division focuses on their core markets. Uh, I have to say that this is a reflection of what I introduced earlier on. So Manfrotto as a brand refocusing fully on professional photography and as far as motion picture is concerned, our primary target is a content creator who operates with a compact system camera, whilst our sister companies in group, brands like Sackler, Vinton, uh, Teradec, are clearly more connected to the higher level professional within broadcasting and cinematography. So that explains why no NAB uh, for our division, yet yes NAB uh, for other brands and divisions of the same group. Marco, before we, we wrap up this uh, comprehensive uh, conversation, anything else that you would like to, to say or share? Under the circumstances, uh, uh, obviously, the, the, the first thought that comes to mind is to use this uh, little opportunity uh, to uh, wish uh, to all of our business partners uh, 
anybody we know in the industry, our colleagues, all imaging enthusiasts, uh, our best wishes for good health uh, in the weeks ahead, uh, provided we stay safe. Uh, I am convinced that the industry will overcome uh, this very challenging time and we will find inspiration uh, from the challenge to reinvent ourselves. Uh, it is very tough now, but what I'm convinced uh, is that uh, images will continue to be uh, a core attribute of society going forward. Uh, our industry reinvented itself since it started. Uh, I'm sure we will reinvent ourselves uh, again uh, going forward. And in that sense, I maybe, you know, I, I want to wrap up uh, hoping that uh, our industry, but the world overall, we see some of the uh, positive behaviors that we are learning from this experience. I would have never imagined that we could manage, uh, you know, a company of our magnitude so smart working, which actually brings social and environmental benefits. Just to mention one little thing. Uh, it is incredible to see the impact, the positive impact on the environment uh, that the last few weeks of lockdown have brought, uh, how much less we can use cars, uh, for example, uh, and in that sense, be safer. So there are, uh, you know, elements uh, that we can learn from uh, and improve uh, not only the industry, but society as a whole. And I hope we will play a positive part in capturing those benefits uh, and creating uh, awareness uh, of the positive learnings from this very unfortunate situation. Marco, so on this positive note, I would like to thank you very much uh, for joining us. And uh, guys, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.